Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, and we're back on the PlayStation 4, this time on Fox 6 PlayStation 4. Uh, there you can see him at the bottom of the list. He will be playing a game on North. He was kind enough to send me this replay, and uh, I will be giving some of my thoughts on the Yumato event uh, over top it, uh, while we also watch some pretty top-notch gameplay from his point of view. Um, now, we're starting a little bit into the game. My guess is that Fox was uh, luring them into a false sense of security by making them think he was AFK, or AFC, as the case would be. Uh, but immediately we see uh, Jean Barr already being a little too confident in his brand new shiny boat. And it looks like he has been casually reduced to a third of his former self. Now I'm going to go ahead and flash Fox's commander up on the screen. As you can see, he is leaning into that accuracy build. Uh, has just the two heals as a result of that. I think that's probably what most people were doing during the test. Uh, here we see, it looks like one of Fox's teammates is trying to get to the other side of the map as quickly as possible. And may have misjudged that fast way to do that was straight through a friendly battleship. Now I like what Fox is doing here because he is pushing in on B. But for his sake, there's only the one destroyer on the enemy team. A little bit of a mismatch there with only one cruiser on his team. So this is really ideal territory for the Yamato because uh, frankly, it kind of breaks the rules of the game since shell size matters so much in terms of how penetration values are figured and of course He's going up against just battleships for the most part Now he has an enemy Yamato just confidently sailing about as flat as he possibly could uh, to him so this is nice and Apparently, in spite of having already placed one good salvo into his side and one fairly not good salvo into his side as well, um, that Yamato just keeps sailing as, as broadside as he can. Not a lot of luck on the RNG there. Gotta go to church a little bit more often, I guess. But... As you can see, the Yamato's guns reload kind of absurdly fast. And so he's ready to put a fourth salvo into the side of the Yamato. And that looks pretty close to the end. He leaves him with just enough hit points that somebody else will be able to finish him off uh, if he's not lucky. Uh, on, in any case, he is going to live to fight another day, it looks like sailing behind that island. Naturally, that's going to make this John Barr the best and only target for Fox, so obviously he's going to get some attention. I get a sense that John Barr was just in a bad position. Sometimes that can happen in spite of anything that you actually do yourself. And there you can hear Fox is seeing if he can't get just a little bit of camo on the side of this ship. Uh, maybe some of it will rub off from that Iowa. In any case, what you're looking at is probably the historic camo for the Yamato, which is to say, none. Uh, Fox is doing a good job here. He's pushing in to be with that other battleship in here. You're actually going to be able to take capture points. and That's something that most battleship commanders don't do nearly enough of. 
And as you can see, Fox is currently staring down that Yamato that he left on pretty much nothing. He'd managed to recover a little bit of hit points. I don't think he's getting out of that one. And we have our first kill on 135,000 damage. Uh, now, there's a Tirpitz. It's a little bit out of position as well. Not so much because of uh, anything he did, but just because everybody else on this side has kind of left him high and dry. You know, if he's supposed to be over here, that's a matter of debate. But if he has no friends over here, then it's probably not a great idea. And at this sort of range, you can count on the Turpits. Turtleback armor not really doing a whole lot of any good, considering just how much damage they figure these 18.1 inch guns are going to do. And honestly, probably just a lot. Uh, he walks away with a high caliber, which is... It's good. It is not hard to do a ton of damage in the... Uh, Yamato, but so far, Fox has managed to get nearly 170,000 while taking basically no damage that he can't heal back. And essentially that's due to a combination of good angling, uh, but also it didn't hurt that that Iowa went first and took a lot of damage for us. Bump that up to 175,000, we're up to three kills, and now... Fox is breaking into the backfield here, uh, and then in a short 20 seconds, uh, obviously Fox is going to be ready to uh, shoot this Jean Bar. Now it does look like the Jean Bar is trying to back up. Fox reads that. Um, probably not quite enough, but catches that front citadel anyway. So what do I know? Now it looks like our friend has managed to get up to 192,000 and tack on an additional three kills, up to four kills in total. Uh, this Jean Bar is way too close uh, to a Yamato to, to hope to live through pretty much any of this. Uh, he did just barely survive the main battery, but Yamato has uh, an impressive array of secondary guns uh, including those six inch turrets mounted just behind the front turrets and just in front of the rear turret super firing and they do a lot of damage if you actually manage to hit here we have basically a full strength Yamato uh, it looked like a fair fight up until that volley Fox gets hit in the infamous cheek. Uh, usually aiming at the front of these Yamatos, you want to try to land shots right about under the second turret. And there we see a little bit of retribution as essentially Fox does exactly the same thing that that enemy Yamato did to him. Hitting him right in the cheek and doing just a ridiculous amount of damage. Uh, he has limited the amount of damage he's going to get in return by disabling a turret, and there you see more shots into the infamous cheek, three citadels, 282,000 damage, just absurd, uh, and as you saw, he's already passed the, the Kraken Unleashed with his close quarters kill, and this is just a little bit of extra icing on the cake. Now, as we continue... Uh, Fox is looking for that last ship, and with it being that destroyer, um, he doesn't have a real good chance of actually catching up. Uh, might as well sail into the enemy cap, make sure they stop accumulating points, and convert this into some more XP on his side. So how did I think about the Yamato event? Now, obviously this event had essentially three phases, I think it's safe to say none of these were particularly great, but you can argue which phase you liked the most. Uh, frankly, I did not like phase one the most, and after that, I pretty much stuck to AI. 
uh, mostly because I didn't want to ruin anybody else's experience, and I didn't want my experience to be ruined by bad matchmaking. That said, I find the idea of a legendary tier a little bit strange, and that's probably because, functionally, the Yamato wasn't really a better battleship than the Iowa. It did have bigger guns, so if it was ever in a 1v1 sort of knockdown drag out fight, the Iowa would have been in a lot of trouble if the Yamato actually landed any hits. Now that said, unless it was a flat calm on a clear day, Yamato would probably not even be able to hit the Iowa, though lucky hits do happen. And that said, with so many of what would reasonably be the legendary ships in naval history already being represented in the game, then it kind of feels like the legendary tier would just be the Yamato and a whole bunch of ships that may have been designed on paper, or that were built after the war. That would kind of be too bad. And if you think about the most legendary ships in the game, I would argue probably the most legendary ship in the game is the Bismarck. The Bismarck is obviously a ship that even bards sing about today, and in its time was of such fabled power that England forgot entirely about keeping calm and instead mustered the might of an entire empire against her. And please understand that when I say that, I'm not saying that the Bismarck could defeat the Yamato in reality, but what I am saying is that the Yamato as represented in the game is not exceptionally accurate to her relative power against other battleships of her time. She's very much rendered as kind of this mythically powerful ship with fast rotating guns that are accurate and that pretty much ignore all the rules in the game and devastate anything it hits. If you're going to go that way for the Yamato, there's really not much of an argument for why you wouldn't be able to do that for other legendary ships. That said, this is just the first pass at the Yamato and legendary ships as a whole. I do hope that we see the Yamato at least in one more test event before they consider actually releasing this thing into the wild. And I think with the amount of feedback they've got about the tier 7 matchmaking right now, that that'll probably be the case. And maybe they'll reconsider exactly what constitutes a legendary ship. In any case, you see Fox ended up with just a remarkable game, over 280,000 damage, and he actually does manage to make a pretty considerable amount of money off of this game. So, big thanks to Fox for sending this replay. I appreciate any discussion down in the commentary about the Yamato, and I'll see you guys on the next one.